and it, and it really said this, if you do not live there, do not go there. And, and that was really about as easy as you could put it because that's really one of the keys and obviously proper pre cleaning protocol and disinfecting high touch areas are in there as well. Um, but, uh, but really that's my main message here is to practice that for sure. Uh, today, we're gonna change it up a little bit. Uh, we're normally going through uh, you know of, of, of 30 slides or so. We're gonna cut that in half today with a slow, uh, short slide presentation. And uh, we're gonna put a very short video on uh, a new technology as far as our OptiSolved uh, program there, digital, digital imaging, we've talked about a little bit before, but there's a strong focus on our tools of the trade. And that's been uh, a popular request from yourselves for the last few weeks, and we decided we'd aim there. Uh, and, th and that's, uh, we're gonna talk about tools and dilution and things there, and really showing you visually some things that you can do to lower the risk of an outbreak without question. So we're gonna do a couple of uh, demos uh, here as we go along. Um, and we'll go from there. So, so again, welcome and uh, let's begin. So uh, today's obviously, this is our sixth one, it's April 17th. We are going to continue these series. We continuously get asked uh, and we have more uh, subscribers every single week. Uh, so we're gonna continue this as long as the interest is there. And uh, next week, by the way, uh, we've decided we're gonna show you a tour of our manufacturing facility. We're very proud of it. Um, and we're gonna walk through all of the steps of manufacturing and uh, our quality control and uh, checks and balances. And we'll show you a little bit of the production line and things like that as well because uh, we're getting interest in that. Some people don't think we manufacture, but believe me, we've manufactured for many, many, many years and we'll give you a glimpse into that next week. So be sure to join us there, okay? Uh, I don't need to talk about me anymore. I'm sure you know uh, those that uh, are probably maybe a little tired of seeing me there, but uh, it is what it is. So so this week, uh, you know, obviously cleaning protocols. We want to lower the risk of an outbreak. You know, we're going to do this weekly. That knowledge that we really want to transfer that knowledge to you because that's really our skill set on disinfectants and how to really get better results. Um, the OptiSolve technology, some choices and tools and steps to improve the overall level of protection for you and your co-workers and your families, whether it's at home or, or um, uh, in your workplace. And of course, we're gonna have an open mic with Asketh Williams. He'll come along shortly and we will go. So I really wanna focus it, move it over to disinfectants. You know, and, and quite honestly, there's a lot of good disinfectants in the world. Some small kill claims, some medium, some have all kinds of kill claims and things. And the detergency level, we've talked about it before, is variable. So generally you have a disinfectant that's a heavy duty muscle cleaner degreaser, but it doesn't have a lot of kill claims, you know, but it really does a good job for a particular facility that has high soil levels. The next one is sort of the middle of the road where you've got good detergency and you've got much better kill claims, you know, so that would be uh, maybe in an education facility, maybe where there's a lot of public uh, that comes in and things like that. And then you've got, of course, a higher level uh, disinfectant properties, uh, but less detergency, because let's face it, there's not a lot of heavy soil uh, on an operating table, for instance, or an examination table, because uh, there's normally a bed sheet there or whatever, and that takes the gross film away. So you don't need a lot of detergency, but you need that peace of mind of as many kill claims as you can get that relate to that property. So, so there are those three, we've talked about them before, but you know what, if you use them incorrectly, in other words, you could have the best rated disinfectant in the world, but if we don't use it properly, uh, we're not going to achieve what we expect to. In fact, you get the opposite because diluting it wrong, using the wrong disinfectant with too much detergency when you don't have the need for it. I mean, these are all reverse factors. And what it does is it causes more harm because it promotes the growth of, uh, of superbugs. It'll leave a biomass on surfaces that isn't a residue uh, where it's a host for growing things, uh, residual, it'll bite in to some of your capital equipment and beds and rails and plastics and things there. So you really have to watch what you're doing and we're gonna explain that a little bit uh, for you as we go. Um, we don't wanna be uh, contributing to the next antibiotic resistant threat. Uh, and that's what happens when you use the wrong disinfectant or you use it incorrectly. So it's critical and I know we continuously talk about it, but it, it's just vital that you do it correctly. You know, uh, And just remember when you're using a disinfectant, any time that 
you come in contact with food contact services, you generally need to do a potable water rinse after using it. Okay, so that's really a, a little bit about that. So I wanted to show you a label today. This is our Enviro Solutions, our ES364. It's our neutral disinfectant. It's our latest. Um, it is uh, EPA registered and also DIN registered, uh, you know, for North America wide. Uh, it's on the Health Canada list without question. It's on the CBC list, which is Center for Bioscience. Um, you know, it's uh, it's uh, DIN registered, EPA registered, and the whole entire works. But you know, so the first thing about a disinfectant is you've got to make sure that you've got that DIN or EPA number. Without question, that matches your detergency in the books. And that's where you find it, find it on a label, there's locations. The directions for use is critical, right? And the first statement here on a label, it is a violation of federal law to use this product in manner inconsistent with its labeling. So what does that mean? The label's a law, right? So if it tells you to use it at this dilution and this dwell time and pre-clean and potable water rinse or whatever, that's what you're required to do. Mixing any more or any less is really in a violation there, and, 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 it's, and it's wrong, as a matter of fact there. So where you see that on a label, as you can see, I've got it circled there for you, where those instructions are clearly there. And no matter what product you're using, uh, you, know, you should revisit that. In fact, you should add it to your training protocol without, without question, okay? We wanna talk about dilution. Uh, you want to dilute it 100% according to the directions, right? It's not a question of whether you need dilution control or not. It's really a question of which system best suits your facility. And I'm actually going to show you live a few things there, but we've got our chemical dispensing that goes on the wall. We've got We've got portion aids, which are our squeeze and pour. We've got portable tops and, and uh, the works. And I'm actually going to show you the litmus paper test, which is measures part per million. I'm actually going to show you that demo there that you can uh, can help you achieve uh, or the result you want. The dilution charts. A lot of questions that we get are, how much product do I have to put in? Now, this is just ounces. We do have milliliters as well, but it didn't make this uh, as part of the uh, as part of the show here today, but we have it as well. But I mean, so if you have a quart bottle or a gallon or a five gallon pail or even a trigger sprayer bottle and you want a dilution of one to four. So if that's what your label says, you can see here clearly you need to add half an ounce of concentrate in that quart bottle to get a dilution ratio of one to four. I mean, if you look here uh, down at, at, if I go right to one to 64, for instance, which is very popular, that's a half ounce per quart, right up to, you know, three ounces, uh, or sorry, two and a half ounces per gallon, 13 ounces for a pail, and a half ounce in a trigger sprayer. So you can see, we can get, and look at, if we go to one to 256, we're talking one eighth of an ounce. I don't know how we make those measurements and how we can actually do that. So, so it's very important that you refer to these things and then also look at the different measuring devices that can help you. And like I said, we'll do that at, at, the, at the tail end here. Okay, pre-cleaning those surfaces, that growth fil gross filth and debris. That's the only way you use a registered disinfectant is you have to do that. There's really, uh, if you don't do that, you're in violation of that label and you're not going to get the end result that you want. You know, we're going to talk about color-coded microfibers. We're going to talk about color-coded charge buckets, which are the small buckets that you'll see on housekeeping cards. We're going to show you a couple of examples of, of a customer that has custom designed their wall charts to help their training staff here. And of course, as always, we talk about proper uh, personal protection equipment. Next thing, they're here, Simcoe County District School Board. Uh, Jackie Bowen, I reached out to her. She's a longtime customer, her and her team. Very forward thinking in uh, in the education sector in Ontario. I mean, you know, you can see this wall chart. Everything is color coded. She chose not to use flip caps and trigger sprayers. In fact, they're banned from the facility, I believe. And they're using these color coded uh, uh, color coded um, charge buckets, which blue is blue, green is green, red is red, and yellow is yellow. So for those people that maybe don't quite understand. There's a little language barrier or whatever. They just need to know which 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 color relates to glass cleaning or floor cleaning or disinfecting or or which is you know what what would I do for my classroom or whatever. So you can see they have a choice there, and we we actually customize these charts for for uh, for customers. And uh, kudos goes out to the Simcoe County Board because uh, they, they really do a good job. The next slide that we have is also what they put on their label so of the actual dispenser. So you can see they've got the blue ES72 hydrogen peroxide multi-purpose cleaner and they've got it there. So they say, use it in my bucket 
use it in my auto scrubber, use it in the blue charge bucket and the green charge bucket. So for glass, chrome and general purpose, that's the way they do it. And then they also, for yellow, you can see down there for the for contact disinfection, whether it's a bucket or in a, a charge bucket, and then washroom area. So nice and simple. So if I'm gonna do the washrooms, guess what? I choose the red bucket and away I go. And by the way, they also use the red microfiber cloth as well. So just key things to make those little things uh, uh, make you more successful in lowering that risk. Okay, the protocol, I gotta talk about color coded tools. Uh, we have a whole array, uh, I'll show you in a minute. We have color-coded trigger heads. We have color-coded uh, flip caps. And I believe we're one of the only ones in the planet that actually have those color-coded uh, flip caps. Uh, that was a request from a key uh, customer in Western Canada. Uh, and we actually had them blow molded and made for us specifically in the, and it matches our dispensing system. So, so looking at the dwell times, because that's key to making it work. And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples here. You can see down on this label where the micro, or the, um, uh, what do they call that? Micro, <laughs> micro, what is it? <laughs> Whatever it is, uh, it's, a, it's a magnifying glass. That's exactly what it is. Um, um, but you can see there under blue, I mean, you leave the surface wet for five minutes, you know, and also by mixing two ounces per gallon. If you, you've got to respect those dwell times. So I'm going to show you some ways that, uh, that we can actually achieve that for you. So it's important. And then tools of the trade. Uh, on the top left, that's one of our traditional single cavity mop buckets that basically is a spreader of contamination. It does not matter what brand of disinfectant or what brand of bucket it is or whatever. I mean, if you're using that to go through your facility, it's time for a change and improvement. On the right hand side, you'll see a double cavity bucket. And what you can see is you see in the front of the bucket, and that's the blue one I'm referring to. If you see the clean solution in the front, okay, and you see the contaminated dirty uh, solution in the back, that means you've taken that mop with fresh solution, you've gone out in the floor in the buildings and all of your rooms, you've come back and you've separated that, whatever you've picked up off the floor, whatever type of room, it doesn't matter what it, whether it was a, a food spill, a bodily fluid spill, the ketchup or mustard or relish in the grocery store still or whatever, you've separated it from going back into your, into your solution. So what does that do? that actually does a cleaner, safer end result that lowers the cost of, because you're not going back to the closet and I'll, I'll show you an actual bucket when we get going. And you can see down on the bottom, there's some color coded charge buckets there. So, so uh, that's what we've got. So I've talked already about the advantages of a double ca uh, cavity uh, mop bucket you get a better overall clean. You've got less labor. You've got fewer trips back to the custodial closet and that could be at the far end of the building without question. So I'll show you a little uh, hands on there. So uh, um, really the cl cleaning validation, we've talked about this about three times in our last uh, seminars and it's, and it's important because people ask us, what's the new technology? What do you, what do you have coming out that can help me? What can help me see the risk that's on a surface. Because right now, if I look at that keyboard on the left, I mean, it looks fairly clean. If you look at the desk you're in front of right now, the table you're in front of right now, whatever it is, it probably looks fairly clean, okay? But, the, but the, that's where the issue is. It tricks us into thinking it's clean. Then maybe custodial staff don't think we have to actually clean, but look at when we do our OptiSolve digital imaging on the right-hand side, look what it shows. So what we can do is visually, we can, we can make the invisible visible and we just show it right there on the right hand side and that's where all your fingers are going to be and then it's on your face and then it's on the door handle or it's on the coffee machine or it's on the, doesn't matter what it is through your facility. And remember the viruses and bacteria, they come to work with you and, they, and you pick it up at work and you take it back home. Right, so let's be aware of these things. So I'm gonna show you a nice short little video here for about two or three minutes on really the OptiSolve technology and, uh, and hopefully find it entertaining and then we'll come back to you. OptiSolve is an assessment service where we use our proprietary imaging technology to reveal microbial contamination on surfaces. Basically, we make the invisible visible. Environmental cleaning has a huge role to play in preventing people from getting ill. What we do is we improve environmental cleaning and disinfection. Our service is configurable to just about any type of facility, from an office space all the way to an ICU ward in a hospital. The way things are done today, 
people will use swabs and the swabs will never pinpoint the exact location of the microbial contamination. We are able to do that, which then allows a environmental services manager or an infection prevention manager to adapt their processes for cleaning to make sure that those spots never get missed again. Seneca College maintains a very high cleaning standard. We meet the APA Level 2 standard at all of our campuses. Our focus is on making sure that the environment is a clean environment for staff, students, employees, visitors. I found OptiSolve a valuable tool for us because it uh, helps us to validate our great cleaning program that we have. We use the results of the OptiSolve audit as a teaching tool for custodial staff to show them not only how good of a job that we're doing, but areas that need more attention. One of the things we learned when we looked at their daycare center, which, you know, uh, all in all, it was a fantastic facility in terms of cleanliness, but we found some opportunities for them. And one example I can give you is a light switch. Um, it was very clear to us when we did our imaging that the light switch had been cleaned. However, we could see a fine line below where you flick the switch up had been missed, which essentially defeats the purpose of having done the cleaning if there's live bacteria on that spot. As soon as someone touches it, it starts to spread through the rest of the facility. So I know Seneca has uh, adapted their processes and used the images with their supervisors and cleaning staff to make sure that extra two seconds that needs to be spent on the light switch now happens on every light switch in the facility. Our approach is proactive, preventative, with the ultimate goal of creating healthier, safer spaces. Um, yes. Okay, so uh, hopefully you found that uh, OptiSolve uh, uh, video um, obviously helpful. Uh, that is available through Charlotte Products without question. So if you need any more information on that, obviously, um, uh, obviously uh, look at uh, the website there and uh, experts at Charlotte. Uh, um, uh, dot com. Okay. So anyway, just showing you here. Um, it, it's, Okay, just showing you here, this is the single cavity mop bucket. This is the one that's been around since 1940 or whatever it may be, and I'm not picking on the brand here, by the way. I'm just saying this is one that we had in stock ready to go. But this is the one where it has a single cavity, and everything I pick up off of the floor okay, comes back and goes into your solution. Your solution can only clean so much without question. So if I go out and do one room, or I go out and do 25 rooms, everything I pick up from those floors are actually here coming back. So it's contaminated. I'm coming back and dipping my dirty mop back in the, in, in the solution, and I'm actually spreading dirt. More importantly, I'm at the risk of more of bacteria and virus be, is being spread throughout my whole entire facility. And if you're using an old string mop like this, as a matter of fact, um, these were designed in 19 whatever year, okay, probably even older than me, and it's time to upgrade. And if you've got a handle with the old wing nut on here that rusts all the time, it's probably time to make an upgrade. These things are very inexpensive things. They're more ergonomic for your, for, your, for your actual custodial staff. They're lighter and more ergonomic, and let's face it, anything we can do to help their safety is key. So that's the single cavity mop bucket, and I'll just move it out of the way. Then we go to our double cavity. Now, what I like about this particular one is this is the one that we put our clean solution in, and when we come back and wring our mop, it all goes into this dirty bucket. So it's separated totally. So if you look, if you remember the picture on the screen, that was a very uh, honest way, very good way to, to stop the risk of contamination and bacteria spreading throughout your facility and just the right thing to do. So that's there. Now, also, I'll show you. Okay, and these are inexpensive, without doubt. And if you if you uh, if you've still got single cavity, you need to really switch to double. And then the other thing that's a new tool, fairly new, is a microfiber tube mop. Okay, this is a brand that we just found. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of them on the marketplace, you know, and all of our distributors sell them without question. But what this does. 
everybody knows how absorbent microfiber is. And this here actually gets wet faster. It picks up on the floor dramatically better. And when it actually does pick up floor, that means it's drier. And, and what happens is you reduce the risk of a slip and fall. So more contaminants, it picks up. It puts a little bit more solution down for you, which will extend that dwell time. Uh, fewer trips back to the bucket as well. And it rinses out extremely well. Those, those cotton and synthetic fibered mops, they're very hard to clean out. Uh, uh, and, and these are very, very uh, easy to rinse out. They do cost probably twice as much, but they'll probably last five to, tens time, five to 10 times longer, which gives you a more sustainable story without question. So I just, I just wanted to point those out. So if you don't actually have those, uh, you, you certainly do need to have those. Okay. So now I want to talk about dwell time and the various ways that, uh, that, that we, and I've got this, this table, which uh, with a flat back, uh, flat uh, matte surface, it's brown. And I wanted to basically show you, uh, this is our ES15, but I'm really not referring to that, but I'm referring to this. Okay. So if I actually take, and this is the brand new one. Okay. And if I get the trigger sprayer working. Okay. Here we go. Okay. You can see here, I have to, I have to push a lot to get a lot of material down there. Right? I, I definitely have to do that, but it still does it. So ergonomically, I've got a trigger sprayer here that I've got to press several times to make sure I've got enough moisture. And I have to keep this wet, remember, five minutes or whatever the label says. So I've got that, right? Then also what we have is we have color-coded flip caps. Okay, now these flip caps, I mean, these are sold separately. They're usually with our dilution control systems and things. But I mean, what I, what I can do with that, I can do it several ways. I can soak this, this cloth ahead of time, or I can do this, okay? So if you, if you really want to extend the dwell time, you want that five minutes. You've got a disinfectant that's 10 minutes. I can keep the surface wetter longer. And you can see a noticeable difference between that. The other one too is then we've got a pump up sprayer. And this one here we sell, it's usually, it's for our ES15. It's labeled ES15 in the whole works. And I mean, what you can see is I can soak that surface very easily without any ergonomic pressure on my wrists or anything like that. This is a simple pump up sprayer works like this. And look at how much disinfectant I can put down there. Now, what I, what I really want to do is if I take this and just take, take it off, I mean, just like so, because I'm not actually worried about disinfecting, but I mean, I can take that off and you can see the difference between it. Then what we have is our charge bucket and our charge bucket here, okay, is simply a microfiber cloth in there. I'm going to wring it out a little bit, but just look at this surface and what I can put down there. I mean, I can put a dramatic amount of disinfectant down there. If I've got really high risk areas and things, I can put that down, let it sit the required dwell time. And then I can just, you know, I can, I can pre-clean or, or, or pick it up in whatever fashion. So, so really overall, all of the methods really work well, okay? But you have a choice. If you're in trigger sprayer and not big volume, you can do it that way. The flip caps can help you as well. The pump up sprayers can help you and the charge buckets. So how can I extend the dwell time? That's four specific ways that you can actually do that. Okay. So the next thing, the microfiber cloths. Okay. Some facilities have one color cloth and that's usually they'll go to blue. That's your, your good old standby and that's what they'll do. Blue is used for all things throughout a facility. So here's what I'm saying. If I'm cleaning a toilet, a urinal, a sink, a kitchen counter, an executive desk, a toilet part a partition, any cubicle workstation, whatever, whatever I clean with blue could have actually been done anywhere. So how can I lower that risk? Well, I can say, geez, why don't I do this? Like the Simcoe board did. They used four different charge buckets, four different color microfibers. So guess what? Red is usually always disinfectant. So anything I'm going to disinfect in my facility, my whole custodial janitorial caretaking team know I use red and they use the red charge bucket. 
Okay. If they don't have a charge bucket, they use red and then they use the appropriate disinfectant. Say for blue, that's my general surfaces. So I may want to do windows. I may want to do ledges or whatever it may be. Yellow could be some more sensitive surfaces. Maybe it's around some, some computer software, keyboards, some monitors, you know, those types of things, you know, um, that you could use that. And then green could be something that's used in general surfaces in the washroom. So really color coded microfiber, it, our, our tip to you is if if you don't have four colors throughout your facility, you need it because it lowers the risk. Okay. And that's what it's all about. Now there is a term you'll hear called friction. I might as well call that. And I think that's one of the questions that came in this week that we'll, we'll put ask with on the spot with that. But friction is really more pressure applied. Everybody knows microfiber is absorbent and it picks up, right? It grasps a lot of dirt and debris and moisture from surfaces. So friction is really when you apply pressure that actually helps you dry the surface and remove debris. So when you're doing microfiber, don't treat it like a paper towel where you may skim across the surface. Treat it with some friction, put a little pressure on it there, not much, put that on there and you'll get, get a better end result. So that's color coded uh, uh, microfibers and you don't have them, then you certainly do need that, okay? Here's an exciting uh, little thing that nobody actually ever gets, including myself, but I wanna get two ounces in this bucket. Okay, and this is called the free pour, right? And basically what happens uh, is people ask, I ask people to put two ounces in there and they basically do that. And then they give me another shot for good measure because we're disinfecting, we wanna kill more. So if we have more, we're gonna kill more, right? We've said that before, no. Follow the exact directions, you cannot kill more than 100%. So what I've done there innocently I've probably put more in than I needed and I needed two ounces. So just stick with me for a second. And I'm just basically going to take this and I'm going to see how much I poured and I didn't go overboard. And by the way, the bigger the bucket, right? That generally the more you'll pour in there. So what I can tell you here, and I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but that is just over four ounces. So I've innocently thinking I'm doing the right thing, put in twice as much chemistry as I need. You remember when we said you don't want to leave that residual behind. You want to avoid that buildup of biomass. We want to stop the spread of disease, right? I mean, that's exactly how innocent it happens. So it's not a question of whether you need dilution control, which system is the best. Keep in mind, if you are a large facility and you buy 50 containers of a product a year, if your custodial caretaking janitorial team are, mix it just like this, that means you got to buy a hundred a hundred of the same thing, you'll get a worse clean, a bad clean result. It won't be clean that you've got residual, the risk of bacteria, you've spent twice as much and sustainability wise, you've flushed twice much down the, down the drain in the sewage system. We can't afford to do that. So that's called free pour. And we really don't want to do that. There's a couple of other devices called a, a little bit of a portion aid. And this is the same jug take the cap off, just simply thread this on. And no matter how many milliliters or ounces I want, I just basically do a nice little squeeze. Okay. And then that pours directly into my bucket. So look at the difference here. This is what two ounces looks like compared to, uh, <laughs> compared to that. Okay. Which one is more cost effective? Which one is actually going to give you the better result? So that's really the portion aid that you have. We also have dilution control tops that you can dilute yourself. They come pre-diluted if you want a certain thing. They basically thread onto a concentrate bottle or any bottle on a water hose and away you go. And the operator just simply presses, fills their buckets and it And these things are like $20 or something. They're inexpensive and they'll pay for themselves by the time you get the first, use the first container. And then of course, we have our wall mounted units here. Okay, this particular unit, this is one of the new ones we're going with, which you mount this on the wall and, and, uh, and I'll show you the wall chart and that's what one of the school boards was using, but you mount this on the wall, you take your color coded, uh, your color coded uh, silk screen bottles and triggers. Basically, if I wanna have a disinfectant, I click the switch, I put this like so, I press the button and fill and I'm done. 100% accurate, safe, no chemical contact, nothing, no risk that way, and color coded, matches my wall charts and the whole work. So those are available for high volume users and things. So, so we've, we've got that, okay? And then, and then also too, there's a thing called accurate dilution. How do we make sure? 
how do we know the dispenser is doing it right? How do we know our custodial staff actually did it? Well, we have a, a thing called PPM paper and that it measures the parts per million. So it's a litmus paper in the horse. So like doing a testing your water in a swimming pool. So I've basically just taken this charge bucket uh, and I, I'm not quite sure what the, what the dilution ratio is or whatever, but let's say, okay, let's just measure it. So I take my litmus paper, I dip it in there, okay? And you can see the color, I match it to what it is here. And what you can see, I've got a thousand PPM. So instantly I know I've got too much in there, if, unless I want 1,000 ppm, but generally you want 200 or 400 or maybe even six or 800 there, but depending on the facility, so I can instantly test this. And, the, and the, the difference between this two and lowering that risk is if I fill this bucket at seven o'clock in the morning and it's now four o'clock, uh, how do I know it's still effective? How do I still know it has that PPM, that rating I want? Well, you make sure you outfit your cleaning staff with these things so they can constantly test. In a healthcare facility, I think it's generally known that from patient room to patient room to patient room, you actually have to do a test and record it. So this here is worth its weight in gold. And it's, it's just definitely what you need to do. So when in doubt, Definitely do that. It, the, the PPM count is found on some labels and it's also on the microbial efficacy uh, sheet as well. So make sure you know what it is and what you need to do and, and arm your people with those. So that's PPM paper and making, making sure you're, you're accurate there for sure. Okay, um, I've talked about the microfiber mops there as well. Uh, and the other thing too, uh, I'll just talk about is at the end of the shift when you've done your mop, okay, you're mopping you want to rinse this out. We've talked about it before. Disinfect it, give it a water rinse, wring it out and hang it to dry. I don't know if you've ever seen a little thing like this. This is a tool holder. I know all of our distributors have them in various ones, but when you do that, you take this, it's mounted on the wall and it's off the floor. If it's on the floor, it's cause it could le uh, have some dripping, cause a slip and fall. It's not going to dry property in, uh, properly, giving you foul odors, and uh, and that's not good. And it'll have mold and mildew growing foul odors, and you'll be spreading that through through your facility. So really, for I don't know how much they are, but they're probably not a lot. But I mean, it's just as simple as that. Okay, so that's our tool holder. When you're done your shifts and things, obviously washing your hands. Without question, we want you to do that. And uh, right up to your arms is a good idea. Wash your gloves if they're actually, uh, you know, but reusable gloves. Mine I'm wearing today are disposable, so I don't have to worry about that. Washing your hands and your arms there, washing your mops out and things and your buckets and, and making sure they air dry really well. You need to do that. And remember last week we talked about a good quality moisturizer. After that shift when you wear gloves, they could dry out. So make sure you maybe do that and treat yourself a little bit there because you can, you can do that. So I think that's everything we want to talk about today, except for now Asquith has come in the room and, uh, and we're going to go to our, our questions uh, is what we'll do. So we'll look at the ones that have come in today. I'll take my goggles and my gloves off here and I'll bring my chair back into the, into the scene. And we've, uh, we've made a list of the ones that have come in during the week that we actually haven't got to answer. And, uh, and so, Asquith, where are you? Are you here, Asquith? I'm coming into view. Okay, he's, Asquith is coming into view. So while he's coming into view, what I'll, what I'll do is, Asquith, we might as well start our questions here. You know, right, and I've got the whole list again, and, uh, and I'm sure you'll be on the show. Oh, here you're, you can't hide, and I see you've got your social distancing, so that's good. Thank you, yeah. Jimmy. Nice yeah. to be in your corner as usual. Yeah, no, thank you for attending. It's a pleasure, uh, pleasure that you're, uh, you're coming in. Uh, every, each week there, and taking time out of your your busy schedule there. So, how did things go in the production facility this week? Oh, we're hectic, Jimmy. Hectic. hectic. Yeah, yeah. Hectic. You're catching up. Every day is a new <laughs> is a new battle, but we we'll win. Yeah, it's. A, I've seen uh, more output this week. I know uh, we've got our DI water system working now. Uh, some new speed ups in the line and stuff. So we're looking for. We got more product out this week probably than ever. And I think next week it'll it'll just start evolving. So that's good. Well, congratulations to your whole team because that means a lot to the world. You know, yeah, it great. really does. You know, so. Thanks, Jim. Um, now you weren't in the room, but I talked about next week's session. You and I are actually going to go through the plant. And, are we? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we'll put you on the spot, oh, and uh, we'll go through and let's take a look at just you know show people 
where how it's done, you know, the formulations and the tanks and and the QC portion and then packaging. And let's just show them some of the the live line going there that shows the speed of things coming off the line in the whole work. So you're up for that? Hey, I'm up for that, Jimmy. Good. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll do that, and, and that's what we'll talk about next week. So, again, these questions, uh, I've been gathering them here, and it, it looks like really there's a good combination of residents and facility operators here that are asking good questions. Okay. I think, I think finally, everybody is really uh, interested in cleaning and, and doing it right. And right? rightfully so. Yeah. And I mean, and I mean, we haven't changed much over the last 50 years, you know, and things. And I mean, if it, it's, it's just, we, you know how important it is. So the good news is, is look, people are cleaning better. That's going to be good for us, right? So, Absolutely. yeah. So let's good get some. Not just us, but good for the world. Oh, there's, there's no question. I mean, there isn't any country or nationality that couldn't clean better, um, you know, and safer. I mean, it's not all about having a disinfectant that has nine, hundred kill claims on it and all those 27 letter words it's really what's the right one for your facility you got right it. you know without question yeah. so here's the first question here it says last week uh, put you on the spot uh, last week you mentioned a shortage of trigger sprayers uh, are you out of them and can you suggest an alternative method and uh, did most trigger heads uh, oh they're sneaking in more questions here do more trigger heads uh, do most trigger heads from other bottles fit your bottles and by the way i've heard you mention the possibility of the shortage for weeks now as I've attended every session. So you've got a person here and you're manufacturing, so where's our trigger sprayers? Oh, I got one here, should I hang on to it? You hang on to it, <laughs> okay. absolutely. Hang on to all your trigger heads, Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there is a, a shortage. Um, you know, there's a supply uh, issue. Uh, we are allotted triggers. Um, a lot of these things are, uh, uh, it's difficult to get. Yeah. So hang on to your triggers. I tell everybody that, you know, hang on to your triggers. Yeah. Um, yeah. What we are doing here is um, using uh, our bottles at 38, uh, either 38,400 or 28,400. That's to answer that question. Yeah. That's the orifice of the, uh, of the bottle. Mm -hmm. So uh, for capping purposes. And so we're going to have some of that. Uh, we're going to put on caps and we're going to allot maybe one or two triggers per case. Yeah. of uh, of uh, ready to use product. Just so everybody Just gets a little bit, right? Everyone gets, gets a little bit. And we're right, we have been telling everyone to keep mm -hmm. them. And you do have a couple of options. I mean, yes. you know, we talked about the, I just talked about the flip caps okay. here. Uh, and and the other one is the pump up sprayer. That's I right. mean, yeah. I don't know why anyone, I wouldn't go through with a trigger sprayer myself. I mean, I, I can go through and just spray this, I mean, really nice without without mm -hmm. doing the squirting. So so there are options there. So, and, and I guess here you failed to answer this, but do most trigger heads fit the other bottles? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think that's so. when I went and said, you know, it's a, the 38, uh, 400 out of 28, 400. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. So that's good. So hopefully we answered Amanda's yeah. uh, question there. Uh, okay. Well, there. Uh, can the grocery bags uh, that you bring home from the store transfer the virus to the back seat of my car and then to my kitchen counter? And what can you suggest uh, to help protect ourselves? Oh, well, that's a very, very good question. <laughs> of course, the grocery bag could bring uh, microbes into your home. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be careful about that. So in the back of your car, what you need to do is to clean and, and sanitize uh, or disinfect your, everywhere the grocery bag goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's very very critical. Yeah, and very I know. Good question. Yeah, I know. In previous sessions, we talked about. Uh, I think it was last week where we said most people bring the bags and they set them right on the kitchen island or kitchen counter. Mm -hmm. So you're saying there could be a risk there. There's, the a, bottom, there's a risk so, there. And yeah. of course, you know, look at um, wherever the grocery bag touches. If you were to look at this as paint, wherever it touches, you're going to see a footprint. Oh, that's so a good So what way. you need yeah. to do is to yeah. clean the footprint. If you clean the footprint, then your hands won't touch the footprint, mm -hmm. and then you transfer the paint to your face yeah. or the, the, the germs or the Maybe microbes. we should paint the bottom of the bag. Hey, that's, 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 that's <laughs> Use some water-based paint or something. That's, that's a so good you thing. See that, you can see yeah. the footprint. You can, yeah. you know, Perfect. Follow the footprint. Yeah, I've seen some people on some YouTube videos, they actually uh, put a piece of tape down their island and, and they disinfect the whole surface uh, mm -hmm. and sanitize. And when they come in, they set all their bags from the grocery store there. And then on they make side. sure they, process, like they clean yes. them all and yes. do whatever and take them to the fridge or the cupboards or something mm -hmm. there. So that maybe we'll talk about that in a few. I know we've said we were going to talk about food safety, but yes. we, just, uh, we're, we haven't got to. It yet, okay. but okay, that's good. Can my co workers spread the virus when they bring their lunch bags from home into our lunchroom? Absolutely. And what we have done here at Charlotte Products and Swish, we've got a cleaning crew 24 7. 
Okay. So, so all the touch points, yeah. the tabletops, okay. everything's being cleaned on a yeah. regular, regular yeah. basis, and we insist on hand washing. Yeah. Hand so washing is key. Any distributor across the country would be doing that. I want to you know, like, so. like that. That's Absolutely. for sure. We have all kinds of distributors mm -hmm. that use it and, uh, and things there. So, so that's good. Okay. Uh, here's one here. Uh, if I cannot buy any disinfectant product anywhere, can I protect mm -hmm. myself and family by washing surfaces with an all-purpose cleaner or even a dish detergent? Yes, you can. Okay. You, you, you can wash. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Can't emphasize that more. Mm -hmm. you got to clean. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Geez, I'm getting powder on me from those gloves. <laughs> so I'm turning uh, white here, as a matter of fact, there. So that's good. Uh, one of our staff members was reading an F the SDS sheet for a disinfectant this week, and it appears to be fairly dangerous or risky. Is this to scare us into wearing PPE or are manufacturers being overprotected to avoid liability? Uh, what's your take there? Well, you know, um, we have just a bundle of cells, really. And uh, disinfectants, what do they do? They destroy microbes. Mm -hmm. So one should be very, very careful and respect disinfectants, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we should wear proper PPEs when using uh, any disinfectants. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I know a little bit about SDS sheets, and I, and I know mm -hmm. if you actually read the SDS sheet on a glass cleaner, it'll tell you wear goggles and gloves. Absolutely. Right? I mean, so to, if you could look at it and say, well, is it that dangerous? Well, no, it's there to protect the, probably when you spray in the air the wrong way, because you're yes. sp making it airborne, mm -hmm. that it, ir it lands in your skin or your eyes and mm -hmm. irritates it there. So Absolutely. so really, you should you should definitely read the SDS. You should follow it. It's the yes. law as well. And yeah. uh, and take it up with your health and safety committee or whatever it is there. And, and truly, and, it's, it's there for your own personal safety. So one should abide by by the SDSs. Yeah. Uh, this one is a similar question asked last week. Maybe we didn't answer it right or mm -hmm. something, but I heard the virus cannot spread unless people help it. <laughs> and people are really uh, first and forward of stopping or lowering the spread by simply washing their hands and practicing social distancing. Uh, that was the similar last week. And I think our answer is, yeah, yes. it can, does transfer with us, right? Absolutely. It yeah. doesn't fly, it doesn't drive. Yeah, and you it. said, well, yeah, we actually, move it I around. remember you saying the exact we, same thing. We move it around. Yeah. So therefore, you got to wash your hands because it could be anywhere. Yeah, that's true. I like your painting a bit there because yeah, it's, really, it's, if you if that's a virus and it's it's colored paint and you set it down, boy, you could see it. Yeah. That's like the Optisolve program, though. Yeah, it identifies that, right? Absolutely. That's good. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, you spoke today uh, about uh, you spoke today about using color coded microfiber cloths throughout my facility. Use red for higher risk and blue general or whatever to avoid cross contamination. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to wash the microfiber cloths? And should I use a fabric softener? to keep the softness and absorbency there. No, you should not use a fabric softener. Not. Never use a fabric okay. softener. Mm -hmm. And for the reason is that, uh, you know, fabric softener is basically fat, fat molecules that you, you know, to give lubricity to the fabric. Yeah. So if you use that, then you tend to clog the pores that would otherwise be more if uh, for, um, picking up all the different uh, soil particles that you'll see on uh, on your surface like a velcro hook like a velcro hook. so this is the hook that yes. grabs the dirt and it so it clogs yeah, it in here. so it's okay. not as it's not as efficient as it should be yeah. so the answer is no do not use a fabric soft so just a good just, mild just detergent good mild detergent rinse hang to dry you got, it. you got it can you dry them in the dryer yes you can. Oh, okay so good okay and and the life actually they go on part two what's the the life expectancy of a typical microfiber cloth i guess that depends on depends the quality on, to begin with quality and yeah. how, how okay. often you use it and how do you care for it? Yeah, that's, and I, and I think nice. that's the important thing is if you wash them properly yes. and whatever and, and don't run them through heavy greases and things and whatever, mm -hmm. you know, treat them right and they'll treat you right, I think. Absolutely. Uh, are there, uh, there's a good question for you here, are there any new technology disinfectants coming to the market soon and are the, that are better than today's? Well, at the moment, I would say what we've got today is quite good. Yes. Um, you know, who knows what the future holds, but, mm -hmm. you know, we've got hydrogen peroxide based products. We've got, uh, you know, quats, you know, even though they are an allocation a lot of times. Yeah. But we've got quats, hydrogen peroxide. You know, those are things that are um, very effective antimicrobial agents. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for now, though, uh, 
that's what we've got, and that's what we, uh, we, 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 you know, we, that's what we're doing. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard some. Uh, I mean, for probably twenty years, a little bit about silver, silver ions and stuff. Well, I mean, we've got, we've got, uh, you know, thanks for reminding me of that. I mean, you know, that's more on the uh, ready to use side. Yeah. Know, also, just but we've got um, silver dihydrate citrate, yeah. which is an excellent, non, you know, basically uh, non toxic uh, product. That one you don't really need PPEs on that yeah. one actually, yeah. uh, and um, it's very very effective, and we we do carry it. Is it expensive? No, it's just no. are you, it, it's are, we, are, are raws in a shortage situation now? Or? Uh, no, um, you know that product uh, we've got, and um, we should probably be producing that uh, maybe next week or the week after. Next week, watch yeah. what you say, because remember yeah. you're on camera. Yeah, right? yeah. You next know. week. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. should yeah. be There's producing a... that next oh, week. Okay, okay. Well, that's uh, uh, maybe we can uh, start uh, doing some things there with that as well. If I dilute my disinfectant in cooler water, will that help extend the disinfectant dwell time? I think I covered that a little or a little bit there with the amount goes down. Hotter water cleans better overall as a general rule, right? Yes. But hotter water flashes off and dries faster. It's a lot faster. So, so cooler. Cooler water, you get increase and in, enhance your dwell time. Yeah. Okay. And it's all about dwell time right? yeah. when you're talking about disinfectants. Okay. Uh, can I get copies of your past presentations online and can I use them to train my cleaning staff? Well, that's a question for you. Uh, uh, I, think you again, I think it's absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just charlotteproducts.com. Send in your request there and we'll help you out. All of these uh, presentations are actually online uh, as well well, by the way, on our website. So you can download them and uh, they are PDFs. Obviously, you can't alter them, but uh, you certainly use them for your training. Anything that can help us lower the risk of an outbreak is key. I think we've are probably only, here's a question about friction. Uh, I think I've covered that here. I think we've only got about one more minute and, and one here. So let me, uh, well, I've heard of a hand soap containing triclosan or something like that for disinfecting. Is that available? And is it a good idea to use? Well, you know, the triclosan is used in is as ubiquitous a chemistry as anything we've got. Yeah. It's using toothpaste, anti any uh, antiperspirant, mouthwash, those kinds of things. We do have um, uh, an antibacterial soap with a with a DIN number on it that um, has triclosan. So you know. You could use uh, triclosan as an antimicrobial agent. We do carry that. Well. Okay, okay. Uh, can I reach out directly to Charlotte Products for ongoing support uh, with questions that I'm not comfortable to ask on a live, on this live broadcast? Absolutely, a, uh, absolutely. By Send all questions means. questions into Jim and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, by all means do that. We've had we've had hundreds and hundreds of inquiries. Some people are not comfortable asking a question, uh, whether it's on the chat line and putting their name on it or whatever. So by all means, we're here to help you. We're we're very approachable. And you got to remember, there are no silly questions. <laughs> there certainly isn't, because I've probably asked a lot of them over my years, uh, for sure. Uh, and I think one more here, and we've got it. Uh, uh, the the uh, and I've got that online there. As they've asked the. Uh, I can see it from here with my glasses. There is uh, the microfiber uh, tube mops. Uh, how do we? How do we? What does it say there? How do we? Maybe my glasses don't work as good. Uh, how do I clean those out after I use them? Oh well, uh, you you basically uh, you could you could sanitize them. You could hang and hang them up to dry. Yeah, disinfect, sanitize, disinfect, sanitize rinse out with water, rinse, wring out, out yeah. hang to dry yeah. with the little holder there. Yeah. So okay. Anyway, let me just check the time there. Yeah, we're uh, we're actually right on time here. We don't want to extend it out any longer. Um, you know, hopefully you found this uh, this session helpful. And as with as always, you know, thank you for coming in. We we appreciate your expertise there. Got to send some hard questions in for us with next week, though. Let's get some good hard ones. No, let's not give them the easy ones. And uh, we'll put them on the spot actually out in the plant there, and you'll be very interested in seeing. Uh, the manufacturing facility because it's pretty uh it's pretty nice you know uh, going through and you'll see how everything's made and uh, uh as finished goods there so so again uh thank you uh for joining us today uh we'll be on same time next friday at one o'clock and uh we'll give you that plant tour and those things and then we'll talk about the hot topics of the week and again we'll have us with back for more questions so so thank you very much stay safe and stay well and uh practice your social distancing thank you and wash your hands Wash your hands, ask what says. Thank you.